Hey folks, my name is Luke. This is the Outdoor Gear Review. And today, I am out in good old moose. Say it with me everyone, the moose is loose. Yeah. Guys, I cannot begin to tell you how beautiful of a day it really is. I mean, right now it's about 58 degrees. It's going to warm up into the mid 60s. There's a little bit of a breeze. It is fantastic. It is fantastic. Now today for this episode, we are headed to Lone Wolf Mountain, of course. I think it's time that I show you all the property, show you all Lone Wolf Mountain in a completely new way. So you all can see exactly where it's at and what surrounds it. Yes, I have a drone. Some of you all have noticed that the steering wheel here with good old moose is not straight. And no, it is not. When I received the truck, it was this way. Let me get to a straightaway here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this is about straight. Look at the steering wheel. While I've had some work done on this truck, I've had my mechanic ask me, hey, do you want me to fix that? And I say, no, no I don't. I like it exactly the way it is. You know, in life, nothing is perfect. And with this truck and the steering wheel, that's a great example, a great reminder of that. You know, I never want to live in a world where things have to be perfect. I mean, if you're that type of person, you are going to be one unhappy individual. That's not me. So with the steering wheel being the way that it is, I love it. <laughs> I think it's a great reminder for how life is in general. It's not perfect, and you better get used to that. I got used to that a long time ago, and I'm a better man because of it. So for this episode, this is a lunch and chat episode. Driving good old moose. I was going to make this a moose and guns episode, but I actually ran out of time and didn't have enough time to actually plan anything. Usually when I dig out a firearm, I like to give you all some history and information. I just didn't have enough time to do that. So today, it's just moose and guns, random lunch and chat, and that's okay. That's okay. I know how much you guys love moose, and I do too. Moose is the best. The best. You have to love old country back roads, baby. Nothing like them. You know, I guess you all could say that I'm an old soul of sorts. I like going slow in my old truck. I like taking the back roads. I like it when there's not many people around. The definition of a true lone wolf, just like many of you all. You guys are lone wolves. All right, let's go. <laughs> I love three-way stops out in the middle of nowhere. It's great. You know, it's funny, less than maybe 10 years ago, this road here was dirt, dirt and gravel. Everything's growing up, houses popping up all over the place. Oh man kind of makes me sick, to be honest with you. All of this marks the end of an era, an end of a time. I don't know. Growing up in a small town like this, everybody wanted it to grow up more. Everybody wanted a Walmart to come into town because all we had were little mom and pop stores. Then we got Walmart. The mom and pop stores disappeared. Other big chains came. The town became a city and it continues to grow like crazy, like absolute crazy. We are becoming everything that we hated about outside of our area. We had no idea what we were asking for, and now we got it and we all hate it. Where I live, it's still a small town, small area, but it's growing up so fast. Those days are numbered, my friends, those days are numbered. You know, if you happen to live in a small area and you wanna keep it quaint and small, you know, if you want your community to know each other and all that stuff, you don't try to grow it as fast as possible. You keep those larger businesses out. Of course, there are economic repercussions of such, but if everybody could do with less and live a happier life, it is well worth it. Well worth it. I will bring you all back when I get to Lone Wolf Mountain. Ah oh, man, I 
hate this spot. You can't see shit. Hope and pray, baby. Let's go, Moosey. Woo! Again. Guys, gals, it is finally time to sit down and eat. I've been doing some filming already. I've been showing off the French F1 commando tent and the Desert commando tent. Both of those are pretty darn cool. They are different though. I'm surprised by that. Honestly, I expected it to be like a color difference, but that's about it. Sandwich time, oh yeah. Gosh, that's a, that's a good size sandwich right there. Take a look at that, oh yeah. Before I take my first bite, let me go ahead and ask you all, what is new? Comment down below because I read all the comments. You guys rock. Oh yeah, sandwich time. Mm -hmm. The drive out here to Lone Wolf Mountain was very pleasant, very, very pleasant. I think I had one car behind me for maybe like half a mile before it turned off. That is fantastic, that's the way I like it. And that's what I really love about living in the mountains, about living in the middle of nowhere, is that you can hit the road. You could drive for 50 miles and you're not going to see anybody. You know, I drove for an hour and I didn't have anybody behind me the entire time. That's pretty special. That's what I like. You need a community to rely on, right? You need to help your neighbors. You need to rely on them for help. But you don't need them to be very close. They don't need to be able to see you and see what you're doing. I essentially feel the same way about like Facebook. People on there do not need to know what you are doing, what you're buying, and so on. That's what you save a conversation for. And if you never see these people, hey, that's how it goes. It amazes me how much negativity comes from social platforms like that. It's pretty unreal. And that's why I do not have my own private, personal Facebook page. For example, if my buddy Chris wants to know how I'm doing, he can call me, text me, we'll have a chat, come over. So those are my thoughts, what do you guys think? Comment down below. With Facebook and stuff like that, in my opinion, it's all about like privacy. Privacy is a very important thing, and as soon as it's gone, it's gone. Privacy doesn't usually come back. You know what I'm talking about? It's the same way with our rights and our freedoms. You never give away your rights because they will never come back to you. And you can see how well that's really worked out across the world. You can take gun control. I know this is a touchy subject, but let's just be honest and talk about this for a second. You could take a look at how well gun control has worked in other parts of the world. It doesn't work. And once you have those liberties taken away from you, you're not gonna get them back. Take England, take London for an example, the UK. They took away guns and what happens? Violent crimes skyrocket. Right now they have a huge, huge problem where they're having to ban like knives of all sizes. People go around stabbing each other, throwing acid in each other's faces, and they have no way of protecting themselves. Absolutely none. I hear from people over there all the time telling me like, you guys don't know how good you have it and you're on the verge of losing it. You know, going back to privacy, I, I respect everybody's privacy. I really don't care what most people are doing. Now, if I see something that doesn't look right, I do get involved. My friends say that I'm very confrontational. I do insert myself sometimes. For an example, when the kids were younger, I think one kid was sleeping and Susan and the other kid went inside to do some shopping. And as I was sitting there, like this dude, he comes out with like, I guess his girlfriend or something. And like, he is like screaming at her. You know, he's just calling her like, F this, B that, whatever. Anyway, so I made sure to insert myself and make sure like, you know, is everything okay with you, ma'am? You know, what is going on here? The situation was diffused very quickly. The guy was embarrassed. It's all about courage. You gotta have courage, folks. You know, it doesn't matter if you get your ass beat in the end because you're doing what's right. That is exactly what this world needs. You know, and it's what this world is going away from. People don't have courage, they don't have strength, and they don't have honor. I know you guys do because you guys are like me. 
and I'm not bragging about myself or anything like that. It's just who I am. Again, here I go running off on a different path, but whatever. Anyways, this sandwich is freaking fantastic. While I'm eating my lunch here, why don't you all take a different look at Lone Wolf Mountain? I purchased the DJI Mavic Air, and folks, this thing is awesome. It's so small, I can take it backpacking with me. Of course, there's a lot of places where you cannot take it, such as state parks. That's why I didn't take it to Hammock Beach when Susan and I were backpacking on the beach, on the coast, on the island, and whatnot. Getting caught filming using a drone in a state park is your worst nightmare. Don't do it. So with that being said, folks, here's a look at Lone Wolf Mountain that you guys have never seen before. This is the surrounding area. As mentioned, there's nothing around here. Out in the middle of nowhere, that's why it takes an hour to get here. Enjoy. So everyone, what did you guys think about that? That is Lone Wolf Mountain from the air. As you all can see, there's nothing around here, really. <laughs> I've been getting my practice on with this thing, learning how to fly it. Luckily, I've played video games before, so that's pretty easy, really. So far, I'm super impressed with this thing. And I think it's going to be a cool addition to the channel. Now, of course, here in the United States, we have tons of drone laws. Ugh, that really limits where you can fly these things at. But when the time is right, we will use it. Plus, this bag here from Kafaru works perfectly to house everything. Imagine the cool views that we could get. Say, for our next military overnight adventure, we get some good shots that way. You know, talking about the next overnight adventure... I think it's going to be a military, military surplus overnight adventure. And Moose is definitely coming with us. The drone inside of this tiny little bag, that is freaking awesome. All right, everybody, that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Moose and Lunch. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I've had a great time. I hope you all have too. You know, just in case you're wondering about good old Moose here, she has been doing fantastic. I mean, she really has been. Oh, uh, let's see. You know, I've been busy. I've been hauling some wood for some people. Uh, just helping people out all that I can. Oh, God. I got sunblock all over the side of the... Yeah, whatever. She's still leaking a little bit of oil, and that's coming from the rear seal. No big deal. You know, I've heard that there is an additive that you can add to your oil, which will rejuvenate those seals. I might try that. What do you guys know about that stuff? Uh, I know there's many different brands of that. What do you guys think? Is it a good idea? You guys come to me for the outdoor stuff. I go to you all for the mechanic stuff. So let me know your thoughts on that one. I remember when I bought this truck, my neighbor came over and he gave me a hug. He's like, that is the coolest truck I've ever seen. I'm glad you like it. Don't ever hug me again. <laughs> now, just in case you're wondering about the pack here, I just got this in. This is from Sabra. I like this thing a lot. It's very cool. It's very cool. A review is coming up into the future. I have a lot of testing to do. So far, thumbs up. I will flash the name on that. Turkey! Gobble, 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 gobble! I will have to flash the name of this pack on the screen because I cannot remember what it's called. Just got it in. Turkey? 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 <laughs> Welcome to Turkey Mountain.
<laughs> if I had the drone out, I'd fly it over there and go see what's going on. As you can see, I have a surgical kit mounted to the outside of the pack here. This is a product which I've had in my possession for maybe like the last year. Inside of this kit, you have some sharp scissors, some scalpels, some blades, and so on. You know, everything that you would need to do minor surgery. Now, I don't use it for surgery or anything like that, but I've discovered that it is fantastic for getting out splinters. Since I'm working outside all the time, I'm always getting splinters. So I can use this kit, I can use a scalpel blade, and I can cut the skin and get the uh, splinter out. It, it sounds barbaric, but it really does come in handy. Anybody who's had a splinter just wedged deep into their hand or like underneath their fingernails will tell you, you have to get it out. It is awful if you don't. It's just a constant nuisance. It's terrible. So I'm the type of guy, I will cut myself to get it out if I have to. Guys, I don't know if you all can see this, but there's a gigantic hawk over there. Wow, he is huge. Guys, there's turkeys over there. <laughs> oh wait, there's that hawk. Oh, he's up in that tree. Wow, he is so big. Wow. Look at the size of that guy. He's a monster. As he's flying around, there's turkeys over there. Wow. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but turkey just went flying by. And also, turkeys can fly. You guys remember this? From our bushcraft overnight adventure? Still standing, still super strong. Just stood on it, 160 pounds. It's another turkey over here. That hawk was probably the biggest hawk I've ever seen. It was as big as a turkey vulture. It was huge. Wow. And the turkeys, they got away from me. All right, guys, strength and honor to you all. Be good, be kind, have some courage. I'll see you all later.